Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton High School or Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Tom Nappy and Larry Sacklad on the call. Matt Clark is our cameraman as the eight and four Hopkinton Hillers take on the six and five Medfield Warriors. Medfield is led by head coach Dave Worthley. The Hillers are led by head coach Steve Simos. Let's take a look at the Medfield lineup and they are going to start off with left fielder Sean Tyre. The shortstop Ryan Johnson will bat second. Ben Adams, the center fielder, will bat third. Chris Schroer, the catcher, will hit cleanup. John McDonald, the first baseman, will bat fifth. Ben Lenard, the third baseman, will bat sixth. James Colley, the DH, will hit seventh. Max Goodman, the second baseman, will hit eighth. And Riley Dugan, the right fielder, will hit ninth. And Will Stolzenbach is the pitcher for the Medfield Warriors. Let's send it over to Larry Sacklow to take a look at the Hopkinton Hillers defense. Thank you, Tom. At third base today is Matt Lindquist, shortstop Timmy Burdick. Number one, Jack Whaley at second base. Number 22, Zach Sasitsky at first base. Left to right, Connor Hebert, Tommy Ambrosino, and Anthony Farina make up the outfield. Catching today is Stevie Simos and pitching Tommy Leone. And you corrected me on a name yesterday, so i got to correct you on one today. Tommy Embrasoni is the center oh, fielder. Oh, darn. <laughs> As we are just about ready to go, Tom Leone is out there warming up and getting ready to battle a tough midfield lineup that has hit a 293 so far this season. And taking a look at Tom Leone's stats, he kind of struggled his last time out against Holliston. The Hillers did pull off the walk-off win. He has a 677 ERA in 10 and a third of an inning, and he is hoping to have some better luck out there today. It is a nice day for baseball, a bit windy as usual here at the Hopkinton High School baseball field. The temperature at 69 degrees, partly cloudy skies, and I'd say it's a uh, Pretty good atmosphere for some baseball here today, Larry. Yes, it is. Got some 4-1-1 from last week's umpire who called for Tommy. He said his uh, fastball had some life on it, but he left it over the middle of the plate, and that's what got him into trouble. So he's got to stay on the corners and mix in some breaking stuff, and he should be fine. And as I mentioned, the midfield lineup hitting a 293 overall. They have some pretty good hitters in this lineup and it is going to be a tough battle out there today for Tom Leone. Both of these teams still working towards a playoff spot. The Hillers of course only two wins away from clinching a playoff spot. Medfield needs another four wins so a lot to play for here this afternoon in this TVL battle between the Hillers and Medfield and in just a moment we'll get you the TVL standings as well as there is a whole lot of teams in playoff contention as the infield meets up on the mound for a final talk taking a look at the standings Ashland has already clinched a playoff spot they are 11 and 3 Dedham's already in and after yesterday they are now 11 and 3 the Hillers of course dropped to 8 and 4 with a loss yesterday and also in contention, Holliston. They're eight and three on the season. Medway eight and five. As we are ready for the first hitter, Sean Tyre steps in as Tom Leone set to deal. And this is hit foul, 0 and 1. We've got a new sponsor today on the scoreboard since the last time we were here. We do. What's the new one? Is it Duncan? It's little round things with a hole in it. Ah. They serve coffee. Ah, okay. There's strike two, 0 oh and two. That's where he's got to keep his pitches on the outside corner. Tyre hitting a 256 on the season and he swings there for strike three. One up, one down, and that'll bring up Ryan Johnson. Nice to see Stevie Simos behind the plate. There was some question as to whether he could throw. 
but he didn't throw the ball down to third base and have it around the horn, so he might be on some type of restriction. Here's a strike. Shortstop Ryan Johnson at the plate. He is hitting a 325 this season, 13 for 40 overall. And he puts this one on the ground, right side, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, no problem. Four to three for the second out. That'll bring up Ben Adams, the center fielder. That was an easy read for Jack Whaley. Ball was cut in the grass. Didn't have much to do there, but stick out his glove and throw to first base. Now this hitter you certainly want to look out for, a 462 batting average. As he puts this one in the air, left side, shallow left field, ranging way over to try to make the catch is the shortstop. Looked like Tim Burdick came over, and he was unable to get there in time, but it was foul. Fair. Oh, it was fair, excuse me. So Just on the line. it is a two-out single for Ben Adams. It'll bring up Chris Schroer, the catcher. The wind really played oh, a part with that. It certainly did. From my uh, perspective, it looked foul. Lindquist and um, Burdick almost crisscrossed out there. That was a good effort by Burdick, though, to come all the way over. Chris Schwer, the cleanup hitter for Medfield today, and the catcher. Having a pretty good season, 346 batting average. A lot of power in this Medfield lineup. He's 9 for 26. 10 runs driven in. Checking at first, nearly got him. Ben Adams was taking a huge lead off the bag, and Leone throws over. He was getting very greedy with his lead. I don't know who's calling for the uh, pickoffs, whether it's Coach Simos or Stevie. There's strike two. That's what he needs to do, throw that breaking ball in there, keep them off balance. It's looking like he has some pretty good velocity today as well. Leone from the stretch. Runner leading off the first base bag once again. Big lead for Adams, he's taken off. But that's strike three to Chris Shore. Two strikeouts in the inning for Tom Leone. We will head to the bottom of the first. It's a scoreless game between Hopkinton and Medfield on HCAM. Bottom of the first inning, the Hopkinton Hillers coming to the plate. Let's take a look at the Hillers lineup. Ben McKenzie will DH and bat first. Steve Simos will catch and bat second. Zach Sasitsky will bat third and play first base. Anthony Farina will hit cleanup and play right field. Tommy Ambersoni will play center field and bat fifth. Matt Lindquist batting sixth, playing third base. Jack Whaley, the second baseman, batting seventh. Connor Hebert, the left fielder, batting eighth. Tim Burdick, the shortstop, batting ninth. Larry, why don't you take us through the midfield defense? At third base today is Ben Leonard, shortstop Ryan Johnson, Max Goodman at second base, John McDonald at third, left to right, Sean Tyre, Ben Adams in center, and Dugan Riley in right field, Chris Schwarer behind the plate, catching Will Stolzen back. Will Stolzen back has not started yet this year, has only pitched three innings, and we'll get the full line on him in just a moment, as soon as the uh, wind stops blowing and I can find my sheet. Will Stolzen back a sophomore, three ERA and three appearances, four and two thirds of an inning he has thrown, giving up three runs, two of which were earned. He's struck an out four, and he's faced 22 batters. So the sophomore gonna get some good experience against a very good Hopkinton Hillers lineup, which is hitting a 291 overall as a team this season, as Ben McKenzie, who plays a big part in that nice batting average, steps in. He's at a 425 mark on the season, 17 for 40 overall. Those are some lofty stats. What is he slugging, do you know? Uh, we'll have to get back to you on that All one. All right. He's had two uh, mammoth home runs to center field, almost in the exact same spot. Oh, that white SUV is not there today. <laughs> that white SUV was nearly smashed up. Ben McKenzie is slugging a 700. Those are Alex Reynolds' numbers. 5'11 on base percentage. That one gets away, one and one. That's the benefit of a brick facade behind home plate. Ball came right back to the catcher. 
Certainly helps. Line up behind the pitch. Outside, two and one. Hitters will really need to get a hold of the one today, turn the ball around to get it out of here with the wind. And it appears the wind's blowing to the left, so it's going to be uh, pretty interesting today, especially for any ball hit in the air. Two and two on McKenzie. Wind up in the pitch, outside, full count. Well, Medfield, uh, they've had a lot of games as of late because like pretty much everyone else in the TVL, a lot of rainouts in April. So this pitching staff has certainly been worked the last couple of weeks. There's strike three, gets McKenzie looking one away. A lot of grumbling from the uh, Hiller bench. They didn't like that. Looked like it was a little bit outside. Steve Simos will step in. He's catching today. He's at a 333 on the season, 10 for 30 overall at the plate. And we certainly know he has a lot of power. And he powers this one up the right side, dropped by the second baseman, picks it up, throws it over to first in time. Four to three goes Simos. Always good hustle by Stevie. Doesn't take a chance. Runs everything out, all 90 feet. Uh, good recovery by Max Goodman there after the bobble. Zach Sasitsky will step in. Sitsky had a 312 on the season, 10 for 32 overall. Takes the breaking pitch up high, 1 0. Oh. He was a walk off hero the other day. The base is loaded, and I think it was one out. Hit it to left center field. Yeah, 10 RBIs overall for Zach. There's a strike. One and one. Stoles him back is mix mixing up his pitches nicely today. Wind up in the pitch. Up the first base side, slow roller. Picked up and the easy out for McDonald. One, two, three, they go in the bottom of the first to the top of the second. Here we go. It's a scoreless game here at Hopkinton High School on HCAM. Bat. Top of the second inning due up for Medfield is five, six, and seven. John McDonald, the first baseman. Ben Leonard, the third baseman. And James Colley, the designated hitter. Tom Leone back out there on the mound after a pretty successful top half of the first. Drew Rancatori has taken over for Stevie Simos behind the plate. I guess Stevie might not have felt 100%. He gives up the duties to Drew Rancatori, who's had most of the action this year. And I believe that means that Simos will not hit either. Out of the lineup. And there's another strike there, one and one. I think with the wind, he's getting an extra five miles on his fastball. Throwing very hard today. Wind up in the pitch. Up the left side. Picked up by the shortstop. A long throw over. And it's in time. A nice job by Tim Burdick. He had to go deep in the hole for that one. I didn't think he had a chance. Yeah, With that, that gun of his. Slinged it right over. I'll bring up Ben Leonard, the third baseman. He gets a good piece of this one to center field, but right there is Tommy Ambrosoni to make the catch. It's a nice placement out there for Ambrosoni. See how quickly that ball got knocked down? Right, yep. And it looked like it started blowing uh, to the left if it hung up there a little longer as James Colley, the DH, steps in. Now he looks like a legitimate 6-4 from our angle. That's fouled away. I'd have to agree with you there. Six foot three, he's listed at. <laughs> okay, then everybody on Hopkins hit his five eight then. <laughs> James Colley had a 250 on the season, two for eight overall at the plate. This is his sixth game of action. As that pitch is just inside, one and one. Got some dirt devils blowing around. Yeah, it was actually blocking my view of uh, the umpire for a I minute. turned around. <laughs> that one down low, two and one. Tommy wanted that one. 
It was a nice afternoon today and very calm, and then all of a sudden the clouds came in, got pretty windy. There is some thunderstorms in the north of us. And that pitch down low, three and one. Not expected to hit our area though. Well, just remind everybody that Sunday is Mother's Day, so if you haven't done it now, go ahead and do it, fellas. That's a good point. I'm glad you reminded me <laughs> as that one's fouled away, full count. I just reminded myself. <laughs> Lefty steps back in and awaits the pitch. Gets a piece of this one, but foul behind us, full count. Elsewhere in the world of sports, the Celtics pulled out a victory over the Philadelphia 76ers last night at TD Garden. I was glad they were able to wrap that series up. Swinging strike as Leone just blazes that one by Colley for the third out to the bottom of the second we go. We are scoreless at Hopkinton High School on H Cam. He's done. Bottom of the second inning, due up for the Hillers, four, five, and six. Anthony Farina, the right fielder. Tommy Ambersoni, the center fielder. Matt Lindquist, the third baseman. And we did get a word from Coach Simos that Steve Simos, his son, is going to be out of the game. Not feeling 100%. As yeah, Stolzenbach set to deal. That pitch just outside to Farina. Anthony's got many, many nicknames. His mother calls him Curly, and I've never asked her over all these years why she calls him Curly. Swinging strike. Anthony's hitting a 324 on the season. 11 for 34 overall. Some uh, raindrops falling, but it looks like it's just one uh, pesky cloud. As Stolzenbach deals. Breaking pitches outside, two and one. Looks like Anthony, if I'm not mistaken, his back foot is out of the batter's box, but shh. I think it's just in there as that pitch is outside, three and one. Stolzenbach awaits the sign and now deals. Swinging strike. It'll fill up the count on Farina. They're not getting cheaters. The hell of not getting cheated. The Hillers hitters today. They think they can tee off on this kid. And there is out number one. Blazing fastball there by Stolzenbach, and that'll bring up Ambrosoni. Good looking pitcher, Stolzenbach. Yeah, he's dealing out there. Mr. Bunt is up at the plate. Third baseman playing very deep. Stolzenbach delivers on the ground. Slow roller up the right side. Picked up by the second baseman. Throw over. No problem. A pretty good play there by Max Goodman. Four to three goes Amber Sony. That'll bring up Matt Lindquist. Matt will be a Nittany Lion next year. His brother was a uh, alumni. Sister went to University of Vermont. Is he going to be playing baseball up there? He will not be. He will ah. be attending football games. Ah, okay. 1 0 count on Matt Lindquist. Although he's a three sports star here at Hopkins and High. He's having a pretty good year at the plate, hitting a 400. But he's only had 15 at bats. He's 6 for 15 overall. He took a year off from uh, baseball last year. That pitch down low. Stolzenbach set to deliver. Called strike there. Three and one. He was taken all the way on that pitch. Just need to get a base hit off this kid and see if they can rattle him a little bit. That one outside, and Lindquist draws the walk. 
2-0 walk there, and that'll bring up Jack Whaley, the second baseman. He had a nice hit in the comeback attempt against Dedham yesterday between third and short. He's hitting a 233 overall, seven for 30 at the plate. Linquist not a threat to steal, and Schwarer looks like he's got a pretty good arm behind the plate. That pitch inside. Schwarer didn't like that. He held that for the umpire for an extra second. The umpire didn't change his call. Matt Lindquist, a team leading 471 on base percentage. As this one is put into center field, that's going to drop down for a hit. And it's two aboard with two outs. I'll bring up Connor Hebert, the left fielder. Actually, I correct myself, Lindquist is just behind Ben McKenzie, who has a 5'11 on base percentage. I told you Connor Hebert was going to uh, Maryland, did I not? I believe you did. Yes. Terrapin. As the left fielder steps in, hoping to do some damage with two on. That pitch outside, 1-0. Oh. Connor's swinging the bat well of late. Been on the base pass where he always causes problems. Puts pressure on the defense. I think one of the interesting things about this game, Larry, is to see how long Will Stolzenbach will last out there since he really hasn't had a full start this season. He's still got pretty, pretty good hump on his fastball. He's staying on the outside part of the plate for the most part. 2-0 oh count on Hebert. Big lead at second base for Lindquist, who threatened to steal. That pitch outside, 3-0. Now, Stolzenbach will have a discussion with the catcher, Chris Schwar. Due up next for the Hillers is the shortstop, Tim Burdick, if Connor Hebert's able to reach. And it looks like uh, Stolzenbach may be just running into a little bit of a struggle here, Larry. Yeah, well, Schwarer looks like he's going to take control of the game. I think he had a little conversation with the umpire between me and you on that pitch he held. That might not ingratiate himself with the umpire later in the game. Lindquist with a huge lead over at second base, but Connor Hebert draws the walk. Bases loaded with two outs. That'll bring up Tim Burdick, the shortstop. And now the coach for Medfield's gonna come out and talk with his pitcher. No warm up action right now for the Warriors. Tim Burdick, uh, one for 15 at the plate. 22 plate appearances. He had his maiden hit the other day. We were telecasting. Burdick steps in. Stolzenbach deals. That pitch just outside, 1-0. Right now, with Stolzenbach struggling, I'm not going to be so quick to swing the bat, Larry. Well, he doesn't like it. He didn't like that last call, but that was clearly a ball. That one's fouled away, one and one. Coach Simo said, if you like it, go for it. It's our friend, the Hawk. <laughs> He's flying up around the uh, softball game yesterday. Line up and the pitch. That one is fouled away beyond the backstop. Heads up everybody, one and two. Looks like Ryan Kester staying busy uh, chasing down foul balls back there. They get them, they don't lose them. <laughs> they add up. <laughs> that pitch outside, two and two. Through the breaking pitch there, Stolzenbach wasn't happy with that call either. May go back to back with his breaking stuff. Fouled away. Good battle going on here between Tim Burdick and Will Stolzenbach. Bases loaded for the Hillers. Two outs. And a two and two count. Hillers have a whole lot of big games coming up next week. Be taking on Dover Sherborne and 
on the road in Ashland. We'll be covering both those games here on HCAM. Twos across the board. Looks like he's going to go for a breaking pitch the way he's grabbing that. Up the left side, slow roller, and it's bobbled by the third baseman. Everyone's safe. And it is going to be a 1-0 Hiller's lead. Yep, that's what it was, a breaking pitch. I saw him digging in there, trying to grab some seam. Well, just when you think you're out of the inning, not so fast as Burdick reaches on the error. Lindquist scores, and the bases remain loaded for the Hillers. And now you got Ben McKenzie at the plate. This must not be fun. I don't think there's anyone worse to have up if you're Medfield. Gets a piece of this, hit up high in the air, above the left side of the infield, and ranging over to make the catch is Max Goodman, the second baseman. And that'll be the third out of the inning, but the Hillers do play to run. It's one to nothing as we head to the top of the third on each cam. Top of the third inning, due up for Medfield is eight, nine, and one. Max Goodman, Riley Dugan, and Sean Tyre. This game is moving on, uh, moving along awful quick. And there's the jinx. Yes, <laughs> right. As the sophomore second baseman steps in. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Sun's starting to peek out a little more. As Leone deals, is hit foul, 0 and 2. This game uh, got off to a bit of a late start than the usual 345 time. They started at about 440. And that was due to AP testing, I believe, uh, from Medfield. Pitch outside, one and two. Tommy wanted that one. He stared in at the umpire. Leone gets the sign he likes and delivers. This hit high in the air over to the shortstop, and he'll make the catch. Tim Burdick had a range a little bit to his left, but is, was able to get to it. The wind was toying around with that one a little bit. That'll bring up Riley Dugan, the right fielder. See the number eight hitter? Excuse me, it's actually Dugan Riley. He's the ninth hitter. Dugan fouls that one away. I think there was one walk in the first inning, was there not? There was, yep. Actually, it was a single. Okay, then I won't jinx Tommy then. Wind up in the pitch. Inside. Riley, one for one at the plate, so he's batting a thousand, but that might change right here as Leone picks this one up, the little flip to first, no problem. Down to a 500 for Dugan Riley. Tommy cruising right along. Sean Tyre, the left fielder, steps in. In the pitch, gets a piece of this one, lifts it into center field. This could be trouble, but it will not, as Tommy Ambersoni has something to say about that, as he was able to range way in and make the catch to retire the side on the top of the third. To the bottom of the inning we go. The Hillers leading Medfield 1-0 on HCAM. Bottom of the third inning, two, three, and four do up for the Hillers. Drew Rancatori to start things off, followed by Zach Sosicki and Anthony Farina. This is Drew Rancatori's first at bat of the game as he came in for Steve Simos, who caught and hit in the first inning, but came out in the second inning. Certainly hope he's okay and he didn't re-agitate his injury. They're being very careful with him. They're going to need him, if not behind the plate, his, certainly his bat pinch hitting. One and one count now on Rankatori. Rankatori had a 250 on the season, three for 12 at the plate, 14 plate appearances. Takes that one up high, two and one. 
Stoles Buck struggled a bit in the bottom of the second. He walked Lindquist with two outs. Jack Whaley then singled, and then Connor Hebert was walked to load up the bases, and then Tim Burdick reached on an error, which allowed Matt Lindquist to score. As now the counts two and one. Stoles in back showing his frustration, but he is also tipping his pitches. The three-one pitch. There's strike two. Full count now on Rankatori. Stolzenbach deals up high. Rankatori draws the walk. That'll bring up Zach Sasitsky. Sitsky grounded out his last time up in the first inning. Looks like Robbie Pagliuca coaching first base. Big lead for Rankatori. As Sasitsky drives this in a right field, that'll get down for a hit. Rankatori being waved around second, and he will head over to third. It's going to be runners on the corners with no outs for the Hillers. Good piece of hitting there by Sasitsky. Coach Vera being awful conservative with Rankatori. I think he could have made it home, but with no outs. Yeah, why well, take the risk? Now bring up Anthony Farina, the right fielder. I'd say that was, and back has not shown a move yet. I'd say it was the right move holding up uh, Rankatori. That was a good idea. Oh, and one, two, Farina. There was a bobble out in right field. Bit of a lead for Sasitsky over at first. That pitch up high, one and one. Bullpen activity for the Warriors. Well, this has been uh, Stolzenbach's longest outing of the season. He's only pitched four and two thirds so far this year. Check swing there, that's a strike. Runner takes off from first. A stolen base for Sasitsky. Well, he threw the breaking pitch there. That was a nice pitch. He's got a lot of confidence for a sophomore. I think uh, he's going to be a big part of this midfield team for the next couple of years. As this is fouled away, third base side and caught by Chris Schwar. One away. That was a very, very tough play. It certainly was. Schwar had a range way over. Man, did he jump up quick from behind home plate. That brings up Tommy Ambersoni. A couple of the coaches had to move out of the way as well. Line up in the pitch. There's a strike. You'll notice two nice, green, fresh batting circles adorning the field. Stolzenbach deals. That one inside, one and one. Ambersoni grounded out his last time up in the second inning. Wind up in the pitch. Bunt pulled back. It hit him. And he will head over to first base. That's going to load up the bases for the Hillers with one out. Now Matt Lindquist, the third baseman, stepping in. He walked his last time up. Big opportunity here for Hopkinton. And you wonder what the leash is with Stolzenbach. I'm sure they uh, want the relief pitcher ready sooner than later. Looks like, if I'm not mistaken, maybe Sean Whitla's warming up, up out there. That's 0-1. Unfortunately, we won't see Dylan O'Leary for the rest of the year with a UCL. That pitch outside, one and one. Nice He'll job by Schwar there. He did his uh, thing standing on his head for the hockey team this year, made the all, all uh, Eastern Mass. That one's fouled away, one and two. Actually looks like Harrison Guarnagia warming up out there for Medfield, a junior. The 
one two pitch. That one outside. Two and two. No fear with Stolzen back. So Dylan will be going to UMass Amherst, the Eisenberg School of Business, just to get that in there. Now Lindquist at a 400 mark coming into this game. Six for 15 at the plate. 17 plate appearances. Takes that one outside, full count now. Runner's got a freeze on a line drive. Stolzenbach deals, and that's ball four. A Hiller's run will come around to score. Well, Stolzenbach has walked in a run, drew Rankatori around to home plate to make it two to nothing, Hillers. Midfield coach looking down towards the bullpen to see whether they've got the hat sign. The pitcher's ready. Line up in a pitch, and Whaley gets a piece of this over to left field. That's going to drop down for a hit. One run in to score. Here comes another run in to score. A third run is going to try to score. The throw in is not in time, and three runs score as Jack Whaley crushes one to left field. A three RBI double for Whaley. It's a nice piece of hitting right there. The wind just calmed down as soon as he put that ball in play. Whaley is having uh, quite a day. A whale of a day. <laughs> two for two. And that clears off the bases for the Hillers. Whaley over at second, still only one out. Connor Hebert at the plate. A 5 nothing lead now for Hopkinton. Down third base side. Nice play there by Ben Lennard. The throw over in time. Whaley stays put at second as Hebert goes down 5-3, to three, two away. That'll bring up Tim Burdick, the shortstop. Somebody's got to get on that bat. Tim Burdick reached on an error his last time up in the second inning, which allowed Matt Lindquist to score. That one outside, 1-0. Oh. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad bringing you Hopkinton Hillers baseball on HCAM. Matt Clark on camera today. 5 0 lead for the Hillers here in the bottom of the third. That one down low. 2 0. He showed uh, Stolzen back with that pitcher's sigh, that deep exhale. Big lead off of second for Whaley. Dolzenbach gives it a long look and delivers. Is ripped down the third base line. That's a fair ball. Whaley being waved around, and he will score easily. It's six nothing Hillers. An RBI single for Tim Burdick. That'll be all for Stolzenbach. Five runs in this third inning for Hopkinton, and Stolzenbach's afternoon will come to an end with Ben McKenzie coming to the plate. We'll fill you in with details about the new pitcher. When we come back, it's 6 nothing Hillers on the bottom of the third on HCAM. Continuing on in the bottom of the third, Ben McKenzie to step in against the new pitcher for Medfield, Harrison Gornargia, coming into the game for Will Stolzenbach. As that one's fouled away, 0-1. Get you the details on Gornargia in just a moment. This is Harrison Guarnagia's fourth, or excuse me, his fourth appearance. Yep, 1167 ERA. He's given up four hits, five runs, all of them earned, as there's a strike to McKenzie, 0 and 2. Ben is up there like a snake, ready to pounce. He's going to see something he likes and go at it. Looks like Medfield might keep the warm up action going as well. 1 and 2 now to McKenzie. We want to give the junior some more experience, but I think as soon as he runs into trouble, we could see Matt Ibla, who's warming up now for Medfield. Runner taking off from first. The throw up is going to be not in time, and it is a stolen base for Tim Burdick. Schwara showed a nice arm there, but the ball was high, and Timmy slid in easily. Very unusual what Ben McKenzie doesn't have a hit. 
in three plate appearances. Certainly is. And he gets a good piece of this one over to center field and right into the glove of Ben Adams. And that is going to be the third out for the Hillers. But they are able to plate five more runs in the third. And as we head to the fourth, it's Hopkinton six, Medfield nothing. You are tuned in to Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Top of the fourth inning. Two up for Medfield, two, three, and four. Ryan Johnson steps in to face Tom Leone. He's pitching a nice game so far. I'm oh. sure he's pleased with himself. Now I'll test you on mascots. He is going to Tufts University. <laughs> Bulldogs. Up the right side, very slow roller. Picked up by the second baseman, throw over, no problem for Whaley. Four to three goes Johnson, one away. It'll bring up Ben Adams, the center fielder. Not even close, it's not the Bulldogs. It's a large pachyderm. Ah, that's an interesting The jumbos. <laughs> the jumbos. <laughs> How would wow. you like to be a jumbo in college? And the mascot is Jumbo the Elephant. Ah, that's yeah, different at least. Oh, and one to Adams, who singled his last time up in the first inning. Leone deals. That one down low. One and one. Leone gets the sign he likes. Up the middle, and it is gloved by the shortstop. Throw over, no problem. Two away. Nice play by Tim Burdick, Larry. Yeah, he read that ball perfectly. Got rid of it quick. Mr. Elastic Legs over there, Sasitsky. It's automatic when he stretches for the ball. Chris Schwerer will step in. It's definitely uh, a difficult thing to overthrow Zach Sasitsky. That's fouled away, 0-1. Heads up to the track meet. Is that a track meet going on down there? It is, I believe. It's not very often you see balls go over there anymore with the netting all around the fence, but it does happen on occasion. Oh, and two now to Schwar. Nice breaking pitch by Tommy. Snap that one off. Now Schwar has to guess. That one just outside, one and two. Leone still seems to have very good velocity working into this fourth. He's been very economical with his pitches, so. There's strike three as he gets Schwar swinging, and we will head to the bottom of the fourth. The Hillers leading Medfield 6-0 on HCAM. Bottom of the fourth inning, two up for the Hillers. Two, three, and four, Drew Rankatori, Sasitsky, and Anthony Farina to face Harrison Guarnagia, who came in last inning as the starter, Will Stolzenbach, struggled. Will Stolzenbach went two and a third, giving up six runs, five of which were earned, and four hits. As that pitches into the backstop, one and oh. Rankatori is 0 for 0 today. He walked in his only at bat of the game. The pitch up high. That one a called strike. Two and one. It's been a while since the Hillers have been in a little bit of a blowout. Swinging strike there. Two and two. The Hillers. Saw, I thought we had the softball score. Apparently that's. The wrong one, as that is hit in the air and fouled away. Count remains two and two on Rankatori.
Zach Sasitsky on deck. Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike. And that is going to be it for Rankatori. I'll bring up Zach Sasitsky. Sitsky is one for two on the day. Pretty good velocity from the midfield pitcher. I don't dare pronounce his last name now. So I'll butcher <laughs> it. It's Guarnagia set the deal. That one down low. Well, a game like this for Medfield, it's good to get some of these younger guys some experience against this very good Hillers lineup. That's indeed what they are doing today. Swinging strike plays that one right by Sosicki. A little bit of a piece of it. Sitsky was swinging hard at that one too. Cornagia delivers. That one down low, two and one. Scoreboard's not catching up with you. You're the human scoreboard, so. Now they're caught up. It's voice activated. <laughs> nice to see if Zach can turn one around here. Gets a piece of that one, chops it foul. Nearly caught by John McDonald, but just out of his reach. Looked like it almost got him on the knuckles. Yeah, that pitch that was must have hurt. That was really in and on him. Shaking his hands, it must have gone in on his fists. Lefty will step out of the box, take a couple practice swings. Good thing he's wearing the gloves today. The 2-2. Two -two. That one down low, full count. Well, they don't have baseball mitts. <laughs> FYI. Cornagia, leg lifty on the pitch. That is hit foul over to the track meet. That was the quietest track meet I've ever heard. No bullhorns or anything. I believe that was actually middle school. Wind up in the pitch. And he checked his swing. Did he hold up? No. I thought he held. I did too. Second straight strikeout for Harrison Guarnagia. And that'll bring up Anthony Farina. Yeah, I think uh, Medfield uh, got one there. First base umpire was in absolutely no position to be appealed to on that. That one down low, 1-0. Yeah, he just held up, it seemed, from our angle. Didn't put up too much of an argument, so. It was close. It, it was pretty close. Wind up in the pitch. Outside, 2-0. Oh. Well, Harrison Guarnagia came in last inning and was able to get the one out from McKenzie to end the inning. And so far in this inning, not so bad. Is that pitch down low? That's about the third ball he spiked in front of his catcher. It does seem to like to throw those fastballs lower. It's the wind starting to pick up once again. Whenever you come to uh, Hiller's baseball game, you got to expect the uh, occasional hurricane. Cornagia deals. There's a called strike, three and one. Very quiet, subdued crowd today. Cornagia deals, swing strike there. That'll fill up the count. As Harrison battling back on Farina. That looked like a watermelon to Anthony. Right at the letters. Wind up in the pitch. That one's down low, and Farina wins the battle as he draws the walk. It's got to be a mechanical issue with Guanagia dirting all those balls. Maybe just holding on to it just a tenth of a second longer. That's, that's what I would think. I think he's just holding on to it a millisecond too long as Ambersoni steps in. Arena leading off the bag to 
throw over, back safely. That was an I know you there type of pickoff move. Lefty steps back in. Guarnagia from the stretch, looks over at first and deals. Bunt pulled back. And I think Coach Simos was arguing that it hit the batter. He's outvoted. Guarnagia from the stretch, leg lift and the pitch inside, 2-0. Oh. Maybe it's the lefties getting to Guarnagia. No warm-up action as of right now for Medfield. Last inning, they had Matt Ibla throwing a little bit. Farina with a decent lead off of first base. That pitch in there for a strike. Nice fastball there, two and one. Probably does not have a real good move over there because usually a pitcher will have a dummy move, a good move, and a best move. Arena leading off the bag once again. And this is fouled off of Ambersoni's leg. That one uh, must have stung a little bit. Two and two. Ambersoni steps back in and awaits the pitch. Guarnagia from the stretch. Got a piece of that one and fouled it into the backstop. Count remains two and two. A little low for Tommy. Matt Lindquist due up next. Shall Ambersoni reach? Line up and the pitch. That one's low and now Farina's gonna take off from first. The throw up is off the mark and he is safe. It went into center field. Farina thought about heading to third but did the smart move there and stayed put. So a stolen bag for Farina, and it's a full count on Ambrosoni. That was a good read by Anthony. Saw that one going in the dirt. And he is taking a large lead off of second right now. Bernardia deals. That one upstairs, and Ambrosoni draws the walk. That'll bring up Matt Lindquist, the third baseman. He has walked twice today and scored two runs. And also uh, in the third when he walked, he was credited with an RBI as it walked in a run. That one down low and it's gonna get by Schwar and easily advancing is Farina and Ambrosoni. Wild pitch there allows them both runners on base to advance. In past years that might have been over that 16 foot backstop. That was high up on the net. It took a huge bounce. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is ripped over to left field. And this is going to be trouble. That gets down for a hit. One run in. Here comes the second run. Lindquist up to second base. And he has a two RBI double. It's 8 0 Hillers. Whatever win there was, he just blew through that one. Absolutely crushed it. And of course, Left field, the deepest part of the ballpark. It's nearly <laughs> impossible to hit a home run out of left field as Jack Whaley steps in. And then you got the hill out there that if you're the left fielder, you have to run up, and it's just a nightmare. That's an oddity in the TVL, that hill. It's like Minute Maid Park in Houston. Run up the hill in center field. Jack Whaley having quite a day at the plate, two for two. He had a three RBI double in the third singled in the second and he's also had some great plays defensively today one of the benefits of being a windy day there's no bugs today that is certainly tr a good benefit large lead off of second for Lindquist who's trying to uh, play some head games here with Grenagia will turn him off the mound Grenagia showing Linquist is inside move. Check in, and that it, but actually hit the runner, I believe, who was sliding back. No harm, no foul, but when you're down eight to nothing, it's not a real good decision on Ganagia's part. 
I agree. Lindquist must be getting in his head. That one down low, and it briefly gets by Schwar. No Lindqu attempt by Lindquist. I think Coach Simos has put the brakes on here. Well, Schwar has a cannon or an arm behind the plate for Medfield. Certainly got to be cautious. The 2-0. This is ripped up the left side, picked up by the shortstop, throw over to first in time. And Whaley goes down six to three, but the Hillers plate two more runs. It's an eight nothing lead as we head to the top of the fifth on H cam. Top of the fifth inning, five, six, and seven for Medfield as John McDonald, the first baseman steps in and he will take a swing at the first pitch and drive it into left field. And that is going to be a leadoff hit for McDonald. He turns around the first base back, but will stay put. And that'll bring up Ben Lennar, the third baseman. Tom Leone working into the fifth inning of this game. It's been a pretty good outing so far for Leone. He's had a lot of sit time in between innings, so. Could make the arm a little rusty. Leone set to deliver. That grabs the outer corner, 0 and 1. Looks like Ibla's up and throwing again for Medfield. Tommy Twirl on a two hitter so far. Bit of a lead off of first for McDonald to check in back safely. I like Tom Leone's pickoff move, it's pretty good. He doesn't show it that often. Leone deals. There's strike two. Nice pitch there. Beautiful curveball. I think Coach Simos is going to call for another one. He loves to call back to back curveballs. The 0 2. Fastball there. That's up the middle. Picked up at short. Steps on second for one throw over. No problem. A 6 to 3 double play. That'll bring up James Colley, the DH. Nicely done there by Tim Burdick. Colley struck out and is only at bat back in the second inning. Swings here for strike one. Got nothing but air on that swing. Leone is dealing today. Stairs, one and one. Still got good zip. Haven't seen anybody running down to the bullpen yet. I think they're gonna roll with him as uh, long as he continues doing uh, what he's doing right now. Two and one. I think first sign of a struggle, you might see someone warming up. It'd have to be a pretty big struggle, the way he's throwing. 2-1, just outside, 3-1. James Colley reaches, that'll bring up Max Goodman, the second baseman. Light up and the pitch. Gets a piece of this one into left field and it is out of my view, but it's foul. Out of play, way out of play. 3-2, and two. full count. That is the one disadvantage of uh, the bigger dugouts. Can't see all the way to the left side. But we make do with what we got. Full count pitch up the middle. Leone taking a stab at this one, not able to get to it. And Collie is going to reach. I don't think he touched first base. Or if he did, it was in. An ugly step. That was an awkward ball to play. What are you giving that? Are you giving that an error or a single? No. I'm Infield single. I'm giving that a single. That'll bring up Max Goodman. It's only the second hit of the day surrendered by Tom Leone. Or actually third hit, excuse me. We got a pinch hitter here? We do. 
good observation. Stuart Whitla is in there to pinch hit for Max Goodman. And one up high, 1-0. Oh. Tommy's just got to pitch the contact here. Stuart Whitla is two for, is a one for seven at the plate. Upstairs there. Well, down eight nothing. Might see Medfield get a lot of the young guys in there. Leone working from the stretch, runner on first, two outs. Swinging strike there, two and one. Whittle was overmatched on that pitch. Gassed him. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike, two and two. Twos across the board. And this is hit in the air and caught by Sosiski, who ranges to his right to make the catch. And that'll retire the side. On the top of the fifth to the bottom of the inning we go. It is an eight nothing lead for the Hillers. Bottom of the fifth inning, the third pitcher of the game is going to throw for Medfield. Matt Ibla out there on the mound. Do up for the Hillers, eight, nine, and one. Connor Hebert, Tim Burdick, and Ben McKenzie as Hebert is set to step in. An eight nothing lead for the Hillers. Harrison Gornargia went one and two thirds in relief, giving up two runs, both earned, one hit, and walked a couple batters. Hebert has walked and grounded out so far today. Ibla deals. There's a strike. That company based in Boston that makes cleats has certainly done a heck of a job with their marketing. Almost every single player is wearing one of their kind of cleats. That one up high, one and one. Not that that's an interesting fact or anything, but. Matt Ibla, 525 ERA. He's thrown four innings this season, giving up three runs. Swinging strike. One and two to Hebert. Ibla, leg lift and the pitch. Outside, two and two. Ibla pitches from the stretch as opposed to getting dust in the eye from the full warm up, full wind up, excuse me. Certainly a slower approach too than Guanargia. He deals, swinging strike, and that'll be it for Hebert, one away. Most of your relievers like uh, Chapman, Kimbrell, all those guys pitch right out of the stretch as soon as they get into the game and they don't lose any velocity. Well, Kimbrell didn't have a very good night last night. Oh, yeah. Line up and the pitch upstairs and outside, 1-0 and on Burdick. Tim Burdick having a pretty good day at the plate. He reached on an error and singled, and he has a pair of RBIs and a stolen base. Inside, but that is going to be a called strike, 1-1. One and one. We haven't seen Christopher Burdick, last year's captain, Boston College, eagle down here to see his brother play. There's strike two. They were a rare brother combination last year for the Hillers. Yeah. Good ball players. A one, two. That's down low, two and two. Ben McKenzie is due up next. He is surprisingly 0 for 3, looking for his first hit of the day. Chris and Timmy probably have some good arguments around the dinner table about who's better at this or who's better at that. There's a strike. 
And that's it for Tim Burdick. Two straight strikeouts for Ibla. Stevie Simo's coming in on deck. I don't know who he's going to be in for. That would be Rankatori. Maybe he's going to catch that last inning. Some slippery. I, I, can they? I don't know if they can put him back in his catcher. Well, Steve would know. Oh. I believe he can pinch hit, but I don't know if he can go back in as the catcher. I'm not sure what the rule is there. I think Steve knows the rule, so. I'd imagine. Or maybe he can. He must be able to. He was in the order originally in the two spot. Two and oh. Well, Rankatori might have to come back out and catch. I'm not sure. That one outside. Three and oh. oh ben just wants to tear into one. He hit one to center field hard, but that ball was knocked down by the wind the last time. Wind up in the pitch. There's a called strike, three and one. Two outs, bases clear. In this bottom of the fifth. Ibla had the nerve to throw a 3-0 uh, curveball to Ben. An 8 nothing lead for the Hillers. One run in the second, five in the third, two in the fourth. And there's ball four to McKenzie. So he will reach first base safely for his first time today. And that'll bring up Steve Simos to pinch it for Drew Rankatori. Well, I imagine Steve would like to go home for some dinner, so maybe he'll let Ben loose with two out. Stevie up to the plate, hit behind him. We'll check Ibla's move. Kenzie with the lead off of first, and that is going to get by, actually that hit uh, Simo, so he will advance to first, and McKenzie up to second. Have you ever, ever seen a kid get hit that much, ever? He didn't even flinch. No, he, he just expects it at this point. It's fearless. Zach Sasitsky steps in, he's one for three today. Two on, two outs. And he gets a piece of this one. Very slow roll. Ibla is not able to get the glove on it, and everybody's safe. Bases loaded for the Hillers. Stick a fork in that ball. Had all sorts of spin on it. Certainly did. Very awkward ball to play. We'll give that, what are we giving that hometown hit, or uh, we give oh, him the error? We always give him a hit. I agree. A lot of blood on that ball, though. He's going to wipe it off, Ibla. Anthony Farina steps in. Gets a piece of this one, rips it right up the middle. That's going to get through for a hit. One run is in, a second run being waved around, and it's going to be a 10-0 lead for the Hillers. Ben McKenzie and Steve Simos both score on the two RBI single by Anthony Farina. Now Tommy Ambersoni steps in. Line up and the pitch. Inside, 1-0. Look good to me. I think the umpire would want to move the game along. Open the strike zone a little bit. Leg lift and the pitch. Upstairs, 2 0. How many innings has Abel pitched so far this year? We'll have to uh, take, Thought you knew that take off a look the top the of your sheet. head. I did read it off earlier. As that one's fouled away. I read it off earlier, but some people clearly weren't paying attention. No. <laughs> are you looking at me? I guess you are. Well, the girls' softball game was over. I saw Jill C.D. at the... Uh, Gets a piece of this one into right field. That'll drop down for a hit. And here comes another Hiller's run. It's an 11-0 game. Zach Sasitsky around to score. An RBI single for Amber Sony. Will one more do it, Tom? Or I was believe that a jinx? so. I believe so. Oh, Jill Cedia came up. 12 run uh, mercy rule. As Mel Inquist steps in, fouls that one away. 0 and 
one. And to answer your question, Ibla has thrown four innings prior to today. You got an ERA on Ibla? 525, I believe. You'll just have to take a look at the stats. Okay. <laughs> Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike. 0 and 2. Gas Blinquist on that pitch. Five twenty-five, if I was correct. And this is hit high in the air right near us and caught by Schwar. And that will do it for the bottom of the fifth. To the top of the six we go. It's an 11-0 lead for the Hillers on HKN. Top of the sixth inning, 9-1-2 and two due up for Medfield as Dugan Riley steps in the batter's box. He'll be followed up by Sean Tyre and Ryan Johnson. A new catcher for the Hillers. We'll get you a name as soon as we can. He's actually unlisted, so we believe he was a call-up. He at least has an unlisted jersey number, wearing number two. There's a strike. Looks good so far. First one's always the toughest. He was. Uh, he asked Coach Simon, "Hey, what are the signs?" So he's a new. He's a new kid on the block. That went up high. One and one. I think he gave him one sign: the index finger. Just fastballs. Don't worry about anything else. Right. And of course, uh, Simos came back into the game to pinch hit for Rankatori, which takes both of them out of eligibility. And this is hit to short, throw over to first, pulls Sasitsky off the bag, but he's able to hang on. Six to three goes Riley. Nice job by Sasitsky. Good hustle by the new catcher running down the line. That'll bring up Sean Tyre, the left fielder. Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Tommy is pitching a hell of a game today. Really dealing. I don't see his dad down here, though. Leg lift in the pitch. Fouled away, 0 and 2. You gotta get that mask off, son. Well, I don't wanna. Hopefully, I don't jinx it here, but this is our fourth broadcast of the spring season. It looks like the Hillers are going to be 4-0 after today. As this is up the middle, slow roller, picked up by the second baseman, throw over, two away. 4-0 with an HCAM broadcast, that is, as Ryan Johnson will step in. Two for the girls, two for the boys. That's right. And actually, we're going to have a pinch hitter for Ryan Johnson. It's going to be Sean McTavish. There's a difference between the names from yesterday with all the vowels in today's lineup. It certainly is. As McTavish puts this up the middle, picked up by Burdick, throw to first, no problem. One, two, three, they go to the bottom of the six we go. It's an 11 nothing lead for the Hillers on HCAN. Bottom of the sixth inning, Cole Glassburn stepping into the batter's box to pinch hit for Jack Whaley. And he will tip this one foul. Matt Ibla still out there for Medfield. They do have a new catcher. Ben Leonard is in the game to take over for Chris Schwar. Luke DeLoyer in the on-deck circle. Well, looks like uh, Coach Simo is going to empty the bench. Swinging strike. Nice pitch from Ibla. Medfield's got some warm-up action down there. Oh, and two on Glassburn. One and two. At this point in time, you think Medfield would just want to get out of here. Cole Glassburn, two for 14 on the season. Gets a piece of this, but it's hit foul. Count remains one and two. Well, 
well, coaches could just see it as an opportunity to play some of the lesser experienced players. Or they want to keep us here for another inning. They just like our broadcast too much. Right, right. Absolutely. Check swing there. He did not hold. He's going to try to go to first as it briefly got away from Ben Leonard. The throw over in time. So Fastburn goes down via a strikeout, and that will bring up Luke DeLoya. He is strikeout two, two, two to three. Right, Tom? That's right. Luke DeLoya up and Robbie Pagliuca on deck. Are they going to make a pitching change? Yes, they are. Yep, it's going to be it for Ibla. Quite sure why, but they're going to bring in a new pitcher. It'll be James Colley taking over. Wasn't he in the DH spot? He was. So the DH spot is now eliminated for Medfield. A pitching change for the Warriors, an 11 0 lead for the Hillers here in the bottom of the sixth. We'll take a timeout on H Cam. Luke DeLoya stepping in for the Hillers. Went out in the bottom of the sixth. New pitcher for Medfield, their fourth of the game. James Cauley is in to take over. You'll like his windup and delivery. Right down. Matt Iblow went one and a third. As the first pitch is ball one to DeLoya. Looks like he's sporting about a 65 mile an hour fastball, but coming right underneath the ball. Ibla gave up three runs, all of them earned, as well as a pair of hits. 2 0 now. If he's hitting 70 miles an hour, I'll beat your hat. Collie set the deal. Leg lift and the sidearm pitch, and that is off of Deloya. So he will head over to first. And. We have Rob Pagliuca stepping in for the Hillers. The winner of the Medfield, or excuse me, the Medway game the other day. Came in and throw his famous knuckle curve. Gets a piece of this, chops it foul over to the football field. 0-1. One on, one out for the Hillers. Line up in the pitch. Outside. One and one. As a side armor, if you're not on, you're really off. If you can't find that release spot. Andrew Sirocco's in the on deck circle as that one is down low. Two and one. Andrew Sirocco going to the University of Texas at Austin with 59,000. 999 others this fall in the engineering department. There's a strike, two and two. Ah, interesting. A Longhorn. He played for the Northeast Longhorns in AAU ball. The 2 2 pitch, swinging strike, and that is two away. That will bring up Sirocco, who is hitting for McKenzie. A one and oh count on Sirocco. And we have Mr. Uh, don't know his name on deck. Try to uh, grab a couple of the players to ask them, but just haven't been able to get anyone's attention. One and one. Is that the ultimate insult? <laughs> hey, what? What's this guy's name? I don't know. <laughs> a couple of players didn't know. As this is grounded to short, throw over to first, and that is going to be in time. And that will wrap up the bottom of the six. To the top of the seventh we go. The Hillers leading Medfield 11-0 on HCAM. Top of the seventh inning. Three, four, and five hitters due up for Medfield. All kinds of changes for the Hillers. A new pitcher, Ty Doherty, 
is in the game. It's Bob McGuire behind home plate. So he did get a name on the catcher. It's Bob McGuire being called up from the JV squad to help out with catching duties. Of course, Steve Simos has been dealing with some injuries. So Bob McGuire could stick around for quite a while. Luke DeLoya over in left field. And Cole Glassburn is the new second baseman. A swinging strike there. And right now for Medfield, it's Drew Backey at the plate. He is hitting for Ben Adams, the center fielder. Swinging strike there. There is out number one. That will bring up Chris Schwar. And we're going to have a pinch hitter for him as well. Ryan Donahue will step in. So both coaches just uh, emptying out the benches here, giving the young guys an opportunity. 11-0 game, why not? Fastball there for strike one. Pretty good velocity from Ty Doherty. Kids really like Tyler. They get on him a little bit, but he's got a really good personality. That one outside, one and one. Line up in the pitch, down low. Two and one to Ryan Donahue. Looks like we'll have another pinch hitter next for Medfield as well, as Matt Cardi is in the on-deck circle. Donahue gets a piece of this one, hit in the air to center field, and it's caught two away. Whaley and Lindquist were the only kids to turn that win around today. So here comes Max Ficardi to the plate, hitting for John McDonald. There's a strike, 0-1. Winging strike, nice pitch there from Doherty. A little gas on that one, a little extra, extra. Line up in the pitch, that one's inside. I have a sneaking suspicion the bench will erupt if he gets a strike out here. Well, despite 11 runs for the Hillers, only seven hits, a whole lot of walks by the Medfield pitching staff as that one's outside, two and two. Gets a piece of this one, hit in the air, and this should be handled by the second baseman, and Glassburn makes the catch for the third and final out of the game as the Hillers able to grab the 11-0 victory over the Medfield Warriors. Hopkinton now improves to nine and four on this season. Just one win away from clinching a playoff spot. Medfield falls to six and six. Medfield scores no runs, three hits, two errors. The Hillers 11 runs, seven hits, a whole lot of walks, and they are able to get the job done today. Uh, some great performances at the plate today by the Hopkinton Hillers. Uh, Matt Lindquist, one of those great performances, walked a couple times, doubled, and also had three RBIs in the game as well. Anthony Farina had a two RBI single for the Hillers in the fifth inning as part of the three-run rally that inning. But a great win for the Hopkinton Hillers here today, Larry. Well. You can say that again, that's zero on the board. Coach Simos has to like that. Re the report from down at the other field softball was a seven to six walk off win. Excellent. And uh, your player of the game, it's, gonna, it's gotta be Tom Leone. A great pitching performance out there today. Six innings, giving up three hits, no runs, four strikeouts, a brilliant performance by Tom Leone to help the Hillers to their ninth win of the season.
The final score for the final time, the Hopkinton Hillers take down the Medfield Warriors 11 to nothing. For Matt Clark on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching this broadcast of Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and we'll talk to you soon.